Hello and welcome to the Overly Animated Podcast, where we take animation seriously. We talk everything animation here, including BoJack Horseman, which we'll be getting into today. I'm Dylan Heisen, and today I'm joined by Michelle Ander. Hello. Sam Quattro. Hey. And Alex Bonilla. Hola. Today, uh, Michelle, Sam, Alex, and I are continuing our BoJack Horseman Season 4 coverage, uh, to this time discussing Time's Arrow, Episode 11. Uh, we've discussed the previous 10 episodes uh, at OverlyAnimated.com. Subscribe to us by searching for Overly Animated BoJack Horseman Podcasts, and you'll find our BoJack-specific feed there. Um, as I've learned, we are the only one going through every episode, so you are, this is, this is wow. your choice for BoJack Podcast. But today we're getting to the big one, Time's Arrow. Uh, episode 11 and soon we'll be finishing our coverage um spoilers for time zero and episodes before i also want to note minor spoilers for the finale um there's not really any way to avoid getting into that i'm gonna so i'm gonna preemptively give a finale spoiler warning it's not that it's not that important just one small plot point um uh but you could watch the finale before listening to this i assume most people have seen the season by now anyway um getting into this episode and check us out at overlyanimated.com so uh time zero this is the uh beatrice uh dementia flashback type episode um one of the most prominent of the season i would say uh michelle what are your overall thoughts on this one? Oh man this is such an episode it's I mean, it explains a lot, <laughs> a lot about Beatrice, and some of that we'd already gotten in season in bleh, in episode two of the season. But like, this pretty much fleshes out the rest of like what her life has been, or like what like the the most concerning and like high points and low points of her life has been, and it's just really heartbreaking and. It still doesn't make, like, her behavior okay, but at least it's, like, much more understandable now, like, where she's coming from. And there's just a lot going on, but it's, like, it's a it's a quality episode. It's just, like, also makes your heart hurt a lot to watch it. Yeah, so every other BoJack Horseman episode. But this one in particular, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. There were, like, maybe four that really stuck out to me in terms of, like, feelsy, and this is definitely one of them. Okay. Yeah, that'll be our end-of-season podcast. Top five saddest BoJack season four episodes. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's this, will be, this will be on there, I think, yeah. Um, okay, cool. Sam, uh, what are your thoughts on mm-hmm. this episode? Uh, best episode of the season. Uh, possibly one of the best of the series itself. Uh, I don't know. I really liked how it sort of delved into like exploring how to visually tell the story of somebody who is like losing her memories and losing Mm -hmm. like, you know, everything she knew, especially with um, Henrietta being just, you know, a scribble face and uh, her mother, honey, just like being a shadow in the corner and just like crazy, like flashes, you know, her toy sending on fire and, you know, bank at rooms and just like, it's insane and it's great. And it just like, it goes just so many places during like what the 30 minute time period. And it's just, it's amazing. And I never really thought that we would have like a full on episode about Bojack's mom and basically, you know, her or- origin story about like, you know, what made her, her, Mm-hmm. And we did, and it was fucking amazing. It was great. You know, so, yeah, best episode of the season. Okay, yeah. Uh, I Season comparisons invited. Let's table the uh, previous uh, BoJack episode comparisons till the end, I think. Um, yeah, the good thoughts there, Sam. Alex, uh, what do you think of this episode? Yeah, I was impressed, too, by just the entire thing. Beatrice, even entering the season, she was already a, a favorite whenever she appeared. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I left her off my minor characters list to fit Vincent Adult Man in. I really regret that <laughs> now. Mistake, oh, mistake. it's understandable, though. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, like this season has done wonders for, for Beatrice's character, just fully explaining uh, how she's gotten to be the person she, she is today. And it's interesting that this episode, while on its own, probably has a strong effect, but it it works perfectly as a complement to the old Sugarman place. I think both episodes are improved having each uh, other in existence as context. Mm -hmm. And uh, like Sam said, it's just very visually stunning, just like the the things they do. Like even in the background, you have like the blurry pictures switching 
you have a, like glitchy entrances of characters. Just the, the way they represent the me- the mental illness is just it's very it, interesting from the get go. Just from the very beginning, where you see the ba- uh, uh, child Beatrice just in a white void. Like uh, it, it's 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 eye catching from beginning to end, and uh, it, <laughs> it it does a lot. It does a lot, Alex. Twenty seventeen. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Hashtag. It does a lot. Yeah, that's their view. <laughs> yeah, um, gonna echo a lot of uh, what was said here. Um, I think this is just a truly stunning episode of television, and one of the most prominent episodes of animation of the year. Um, it's incredibly affecting uh, in in a variety of levels. I think it just it functions at least in terms at first in terms of season four of BoJack. Uh, it functions as a great finale type episode to the season, even if it's not even related to uh, our story points that we're talking about. And it's not the actual finale. You know, the BoJack episodes, this is the one before, are always the prominent one. And this is a uh, conclusion to this Beatrice arc. It's it's really satisfying in context of everything Beatrice has been doing this season um, to get answers. And uh, they make for really cathartic moments within the episode. I might argue that it somewhat weakens the rest of the season to just leave it all until now um but at the very least it's it's it really works here uh at least in terms of narrative this is uh incredibly an incredibly creative kind of non-linear uh flashback narrative intersecting with um the present and it's it's uh, done to great effect to build up to these big moments at the end of the episode um that reveal all of Beatrice's past that explain a lot of her behaviors in the present um our animation wise artistically it's uh it makes some really interesting uh, decisions and um much like episode 2 it's it's kind of forerunner uh just uh, is, is is kind of stunningly animated and um done in such a way that reflects the narrative of the episode and helps to tell the story um, something that I always find incredible on any animation animated show we talk about, and um, BoJack the season has really stepped up there. It, it, it's it, uh, if nothing else, stepped up on an artistic level between this and episode two. I think are are two of the the best episodes artistically of the series, and um, just the the animation, the transitions um, from the uh, really prominent effect of. Um, seeing Henrietta with her face scratched out in the beginning. Um, and it's all to kind of tell this narrative of um, what's going through Beatrice's mind, kind of just just using animation to visually demonstrate dementia and like what, what she's been thinking this entire time. Uh, it, it's done to incredible effect. Um, and uh, it's, it's it, like it unobtrusively intersects with these flashbacks we're having. They're one in the same. It's not like even overused. It's done very carefully uh it's it, oh yeah just overall it uh it, it's just a really stunning piece of media um i think it's easily one of the best of the year here and i'm i'm pretty in awe of it so um yeah i don't i don't i don't know where to to begin here i think this is maybe not an easy episode to dive into the specifics of um for me i think the most prominent thing is just kind of this last 3 or 4 minute sequence at the end of the episode um when we get the uh everything kind of from Beatrice talking to Henrietta when she's pregnant. Um, onward. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we get uh, like the, the intersecting of the births of, um, of her and the flashback. We see the, uh, the doll being thrown into the fire. Um, and then the ending with uh, her finally recognizing Bojack in the present. Um, Michelle, what do you, what do you think? Like, I don't know, maybe like emotionally, do you agree that it was kind of a in, pretty incredibly emotionally effective ending to the episode? Yeah, for sure. Like, especially when she's talking to Henrietta and she's just like, don't, don't like do what I did. Like, I think I ruined my life and I don't want that for you. And the fact that she, she takes away the kid and it like, in a way it is like really awful though, because it should be Henrietta's choice. But, like, it's just, oh, man. And then, I don't know. I I honestly also thought it was pretty great that at the end of the day, like, Bojack was willing to lie to her to make her feel better, which isn't something he's really done much the entire season. Yeah. And he doesn't really know what's going on because he's not watching these flashbacks with us. So, it's just, I don't know. It was really, like, it hit me pretty hard, though. Like, that combination of things at the end of the episode, for sure. Yeah. What's your take on the ending, Sam? 
<clears throat> uh, I don't know. Yeah, um, it is pretty interesting how Bojack sort of, uh, you know, has at least some, like, modicum of, Sense. I guess, kindness yeah. or, like, sympathy mm-hmm. to, you know, lie to his mother saying, you know, oh, we're uh, listening to your brother play, p- play piano and we're eating ice cream on the uh, back porch, blah, blah, blah. Uh, especially considering, like, how much he hated his mother and how much, you know, she really, like, messed up his life, like, growing up. But for me, like, that wasn't, like, the super emotionally impactful part of the episode, I guess. I don't know. While, while it was, like, emotionally impactful and while, you know, the whole, like, scene, you know, in, like, Henrietta's kitchen uh, with Beatrice, you know, telling her to give up the baby for adoption and the whole, like, you know, com- contrasting births. Etc. While that was like pretty, you know, heavy and like pretty, like oh, the emotion that's happening right now, uh, that isn't like really. I don't know. I feel like it was like very heavy-handed, and like there was like so much happening. Mm-hmm. Then it was kind of like hard to like breathe and hard to like you know sit down and like take in what was all happening. Mm-hmm. But you have to like watch the episode over and over again to like really feel like each beat of the scene of all the cuts of like, you know, the baby doll burning and Bojack being born and Hollyhock being born. And I don't know. It's just, it's a lot. Yeah. It's, I've definitely, yeah, I definitely had to go back and watch that final scene several times. Um, I, I, this episode is, is nothing if not heavy, heavy handed. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, what, what, if not that, what, what, what was the most uh, emotionally effective or just, uh, the highlight of the episode to you, Sam? Cause there are several even before that. Yeah. I think it was just the whole, not, not like the montage, but sort of seeing like Beatrice and Butterscotch, you know, getting together and then like accepting their fates as, you know, people who had unprotected sex, apparently. Um, and, you know, how, you know, in the beginning of their relationship, they were happy and, like, you know, they got married and she was pregnant, blah, blah, blah. But then slowly they sort of just grew to hate each other and how all of the hope and, like, promise that that relationship had just dwindled away. And it it's sad. It's, like, heartbreaking. I mean, of course, you know, you're not going to find your one true love in a one night stand, but it's just like, why didn't they get a divorce? <laughs> yeah. Why but- did they just like suffer along like that throughout the years and make Bojack suffer along too? Like, why did this have to happen? I guess it's just like the societal roles and, you know, Beatrice didn't want to have an abortion or get Bojack up for adoption, blah, blah, blah. But I just. It's hard. It's hard to see people just stick themselves in the roles and in the places where society wants them to be. It's hard to accept that, you know, once you do this one action, your life is forever changed for, you know, the rest of it may may be like 10, 20, 30 years in the future. And it's just it's hard to watch. It's a hard lesson to feel yourself. Yeah, and it's not it's not mm-hmm. a, it's not a pleasant episode at all. Um, it's it's re- very heavy. Um, de- the episode definitely addresses the divorce thing when we see one flashback of her visiting uh, BoJack um, after Horse and Round ended. Um, but yeah, it's a lot. Of, I'd say the explanation is a lot of what you said, but it is really it is like really hard to watch just um, them stay in this terrible situation and have it uh, affect BoJack. And um, but at the same time, we're also given. Uh, we're, like we're given reasons to be sympathetic towards Beatrice, and we're also given reasons to blame her still for her t- the terrible actions we saw previously on the series. And I think mm-hmm. um, w- I think we do a good job here of um, there's like there's no clear cut answer. Like um, she had shit happen to her, and it was horrible, and like society was incredibly terrible at, at that time to her. And you can see why she is the way she is, but she still should be better. Um, sh- she's had every every chance to to be better than that but it, we still see it we but we we see the full explanation of why she's just so terrible right now yeah and just to jump off of some of your points i think like yeah boat deck he does ask about like why didn't you guys have a divorce and she just said that thing about how like her father knew what real marriage 
she was. <laughs> Which is really awful because of the flashback yeah. they get for that. But like, Why doesn't I, she just give butterscotch a lobotomy? I, <laughs> I think sure. the issue is that even though she like went to Barnard for college and like got a bachelor's, which was like, oh, like her father couldn't believe that she had done such a thing. Use your brains, robash your hips and your fertility. Like, I think the issue is even though she, she has like conscious ideas of like you need things like feminism and social justice she's still grown up in a society especially like an upper class society that is very much still ingrained in her and so i think the idea of having a divorce is just like it's not something she's willing to do for that reason it's just like it's simply not done and as much as she is very forward thinking in certain ways like she can't really escape that either which is part of what really sucks about yeah she, she's yeah, she's clearly a product of society at the time that's definitely mm-hmm. heavily established by the by the episode um alex what did you, I either jump in on this uh discussion of like why beatrice the way she is or like what was the most emotionally effective part of the episode to you well i, I did want to say something about the ending because like sam was talking about how like the quick cuts made it hard to breathe uh, i personally think that that helps to ramp up the uh quote-unquote feels of the yeah. sequence Mm-hmm. But at at the same time, while it is a very effective climax to the episode, I'm not sure if this is a hot take, but I think the old Sugar in Place did a better job at the ending, hitting the like the, hitting you with the lobotomy and the the final line of why I, why I have half a mind and it's just that just stops there, and also like the the line while it is a bit direct, like never lo- never love anybody like I loved uh, um, crack, Cracker Jack, like it, it's a very direct and line that hits hard. Whereas here, because it jumps all over the place, it, it is certainly effective, but I think I prefer the ending to the old Sugar Man place a little better. But because the entire episode was just so focused, and uh, as we've mentioned, it, it gives you uh, like a full representation of what Beatrice's life has been like, giving you both the what she did right, what she did wrong, the decisions that, that she took. Like, because it's just so full and uh, not distracted at all, unlike the old Sugar in Place, I think that's where this episode ends up becoming the best of the season just because of ha- how thorough it is in, in fleshing out Beatrice's motivations. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't agree that the ending is better in, in episode two, but they're both incredible. I don't know if we need to get super into comparing them. Um, but yeah, it's it's this episode is so very focused. Um, that's what makes this one of the best episodes of BoJack, where there's no distracting Todd B plot. We're just we're very focused on this yeah. this Beatrice dementia thing that we're no we're clown doing dentists. Here. Yeah, well, we'll be- I know it's such a nice break from the clown dentist. Oh, we'll we'll be back then. But um, <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> uh, oh, it's happening but yeah it's uh, uh i i found the ending it's 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 very heavy-handed it's very quick cuts it's a lot um it's just so emotionally cathartic the episode is building up to everything that happens in the ending we jump around in so many different times i found it to be perfect um i have no qualms with the ending i think it was incredible um it's uh it's it's like it's kind of everything it's also the culmination of the entire season um you know uh it, i i just, it, it's 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 just very effective and very creative uh narrative uh in in choosing to do this non-linear in that way um but uh, let's i want to continue this uh like explaining beatrice why the way she is um to a line of discussion i mean i think i think it's it's you know summarized as the episode explains why she is but doesn't you know she's she's still horrible the entire time um but like we get every reason you know why of what in her past caused this we you know from her her mother being lobotomized to her father being um terrible um kind of the worst yeah is is uh it's it's the episode's the most heavy-handed part i feel like is uh matthew broderick's lines of uh just the blatant sexism of the time period uh, just constant in this episode, uh, and in episode two as well. Um, and, uh, just the, you know, the, the, also the, uh, Bojack's father and how terrible he was. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, what, w- one thing this episode and episode two really, really puts together is how, uh, Matthew Broderick's really at fault for everything in, in, uh, in, in her <laughs> life, I would say is one. Um, Thanks, Matthew Broderick. Yeah. Uh, he just seems like horrible. Um, yeah, I don't know. Michelle, what what do you think about that in terms of uh the influences on her life being presented in this episode? Um well, I think her her dad, he's like 
a combination of like one being like really really sexist in a way that's like super not helpful um but he also like it's like he takes that as like a reason to like deny his daughter and his wife like humanity of actual people. Like he he has such strong opinions of what a woman should be that like he's willing to lobotomize his wife and then he like he doesn't feel bad about it for the sake of like she doesn't really exist as a person anymore. He gets mad at her because she's like, well, why don't you know that our daughter had scarlet fever? That's your job. Like if I'd known this was going to be such a hassle, I wouldn't have even bothered with the lobotomy. Oh my God. And like, you yeah. know, like when he burned his daughter's doll, he he didn't like it didn't register for him at all. Like what a big deal that was and how much it was upsetting her. And those are just two really good examples of like in general how he does not prioritize like their feelings or like their their personhood. And like that, I think that very much stems from like, you know, how he perceives women. But it's just it's just really not good. And I think in a lot of ways, like it's hard it's hard to like say like oh like someone's parent was awful so that like excuses like the the child from being like awful in similar ways but i think it definitely contributed a lot to how like again like it really bothered me that she took um henrietta's kid away but at the same time like to her it made sense because like at least like the kid is still gonna be born and it's not gonna like have the same disastrous effects that she like assumes Bojack is having on her life because she blames him so much. But it's just, yeah, her dad really is kind of the worst is, is for he, those reasons. Is he too cartoonishly evil? Maybe. Uh, he, I mean, putting, he, the setting helps blunt. a lot with, with yeah. making this believable. Yeah, I would agree with that. Like, if it was just him walking around saying that stuff, it's like, oh, okay, wow, but, like, how much can we take this seriously? But because, like, it's so much about, like, upper class society in such a very particular time period, I think that helps make it feel more, like, uncomfortable in a way that you can take ser- seriously than just being like, oh, this guy over here, wow, what's his problem, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I think he's he's uh, definitely over the top in the portrayal of this episode. But I feel like the striking thing for me is like that he's probably not that far removed from how men were at that time period. Yeah, I think that's the point. Yeah. He's like a hyperbole of something that like actually yeah, is. Yeah, and it's like, really not. It's him. not even that much of an exaggeration. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> which is the other really sad part about yeah. it. Um. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's uh. There's there's a lot of points here on um on why the you know explaining uh why she is and i oh i guess in terms of the henrietta taking the baby away i it's i i don't think we're supposed to make a moral judgment on that um as as with a lot of the show to me that was by far one of the less bad things that she did in the episode or in the series like i didn't you know i i just understood so much where she was coming from and it's not like she particularly force i mean she kind of it's it's you know it's it's morally questionable but i don't know i was i was not i was not opposed to, to actions on on this side and but then mm-hmm. yeah and uh, i, I want to yeah. uh, oh, uh, i just want to point out like the, they made it was interesting that they made the parallel with like they cut that scene alongside the scene of uh, joseph sugarman throwing the baby into the fire so it, it was interesting that they were trying like at least the way they cut it they were trying to make a comparison between the two because if you look at it from Joseph's side, obviously he, he doesn't care about uh, um, Beatrice's feelings here. But his, his idea is, well, this sickness is on the is on the doll to keep her healthy. I have I have to do this so she can have a better future, so she doesn't die. Mm-hmm. But without consider, uh, obviously no consideration of feelings goes into mind. And similarly with Beatrice, uh, obviously like her idea is, in in some sense is like, well, I, this woman's future, she has a future. And I'm not going to let this thing uh, keep keep her from reaching her potential. But in that line of thinking, you don't totally keep take in mind like what the feelings of the person are. But like you have you have to make those uh, those decisions. Like, do you, are you more interested in the in the future of someone or what they're feeling in the present? And that's always a, a difficult moral dilemma in any situation when you have to face what to do between considering what's now versus what could happen. I think that's a really good point. And it does kind of like show the comparison of like her picking up this like very cold kind of logic about certain things uh, as a priority over like say feelings is like very apparent in that kind of juxtaposition of the clips. So yeah, that is a really good point. 
Yeah, I, and it's in line with with the, the old Sugarman place, right? Like the lesson that she gets out of all that is just yeah, like, having love for something is just gonna end up ruining hurt you. you. Yeah, yeah, yeah th- throwing the baby in the fi- in the, the the doll of the baby in the fire, while not uh, like kind of objectively not a uh, terrible action in uh, not in consideration for her feelings, very bad. Um, but it's just you, despite it being such kind of an innocuous action on the surface, you just see the trauma um like that represented and that caused in her life in the moment um and yet yeah, is a great juxtaposition with um Henrietta in the the also flashback but not as distant past um so another uh, so as we're when we're talking about this um this like why Beatrice is the way she is uh type blah, blah. and I feel like uh one of the results is that um we spent this and we spend this entire episode trying to give motivation slash sympathy to an inherently unsympathetic figure. Um, and I found this to be, um, to it kind of heightened the emotional tone of the episode. This, there's no heroes here. And that's similar to all of Bojack. You know, Bojack is, uh, is an anti-hero. We still root for him though. But in this episode, who you, 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 and you're following her past in the flashbacks, but um, she's they they maintain her just being so terrible the entire time and this whole situation being so terrible. I I, I feel so unattached to everything that happened here, and I think that that's um, an intentional thing on on the episode's part. Um, it's potentially uh, one of the only slight flaws with the episode is I really don't feel emotionally attached to anything that happened to the characters. Um, but, uh, it's, I, I think that's an interesting result of, um, kind of the inherently the subject matter we're getting into with, with Beatrice. Do what do you think of that, Sam? Wow. You can't relate to an old rich woman. <laughs> Jeez, what's wrong with you? Um, I don't know. I think it is, it is pretty interesting how we're made to like feel sympathy and feel like, you know, bad for Beatrice, despite, I guess, like, her actions and despite, you know, everything. Um, I don't know. As far as feeling detached from it, I, I, I think there are, like, definitely some moments of, like, you know, humanity and some moments of horse manity, rather. <laughs> um, so, like, uh, moments of, you know, real connection that, like, every human being feels, mm-hmm. you know, panic and stress and anger and frustration of, like, your lot in life. As far as, you know, specific situations, um, I personally have never been caught in a loveless marriage with a kid that I resented and never no. had to deal with, like, my husband's no. <laughs> affairs. No. <laughs> Not at all. Hmm. I did I, I did have lice, though, growing up, so I did have, like, a lot of my toys destroyed because lice. Were they dramatically oh. burned in a fire? No, they were stuffed in trash bags. Okay. Also, I just looked it up. Um, toys don't spread scarlet fever, so that was completely I mean, yeah, pointless. I, oh no, I, this is the Velveteen Rabbit. I, All right, yeah, interesting. I, I got that from the episode. It was like pointless. Yeah, I yeah. Um, I didn't get that okay. from the episode. I was just wondering that the whole time. Yeah, I mean everything. Everything Joseph does is illogical. So I think it it, it fit, like everything is like a relic of the past that doesn't make sense anymore. So I feel like that is in conjunction with that. Well, good thing he dies in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> very yeah, very very briefly, right? Um, yeah, yeah. And he's balding too. How does that happen? He's a horse. If two seconds shy, still yeah, a man amazing. horse. So yeah. maybe uh, that's why. Still a man horse. Okay. <laughs> but, what, are we, are we just realizing that the show has has animal people? Is that what's happening? Um, yeah, like horse many. They could have made that joke uh, the previous episodes. Anyway. Yeah, because Buttercotch also had his hairline go steadily down throughout the episode. Yeah, this is. Cool. Yeah. Why is not okay. I yet? don't care about this analysis. Too, but... <laughs> okay. I care a lot about hair, so like. <laughs> this is not interesting to me. Okay. Yeah, and j- j- just the, in in reference to the whole like being attached thing, like at least for me, it, it hit a little bit just because it, it does hit a lot on the idea that your parents expect so much so much mm-hmm. out of you and may treat you like shit at, at times but you never really think well like how did their parents treat them and all because you're taking it personally at the time you you, you don't want to really think about context in, <laughs> in those times so just like uh, thinking about uh, thinking about that like realizing may, like due to just the totally different environment in which your parents grow up they they might might have had things much worse happen to them that they may never even tell you. For all we for all we know, all that happened in this episode, who knows how much of it Bojack actually knows? 
Yeah, that, I, that's I the thing that sticks with me. Talking about it for sure. Yeah, almost. Yeah. So, so in in that sense, I I I do connect with with this episode, and also just the fact that like even though she is portrayed as a, as overall a, a bad person, you see flashes of like what she could have been. Like mm. for example, in the Corbin Creamerman scenes, you see yeah. that she's like trying, she's, like trying to be friendly, and you can like sort of sense well like. If this life had ended up being what she became, would it would she have been as awful to Corbin as she was to Butterscotch? Like it's just like there there are hints of a better person in there that could have broken out in the in the in a the right change of environment. But because she went from one bad environment just to, straight to another in San Francisco, she just didn't get that oppor- uh, opportunity. So, but like you can, you can feel that Beatrice is a real person, and in my opinion, like one that has the ability to to be good, but just wasn't dealt the the right hand of cards to truly break out of that situation. I agree with that a lot, and I do think it's important to bring up. I don't think Beatrice ever like was in love with Butterscotch. I think she just liked that he also hated like you know the same thing she hated, and they kind of like bonded over like kind of making fun of each other. And there was, like, sexual attraction, but, like, and it's possible, again, like, because her father was pushing her so hard to marry for, like, you know, a financial reason, like, the idea of marrying for love wasn't something that she really saw as a huge option anyway. And it was more appealing to just, like, run away with this guy that would piss off her dad than to do the thing he wants her to do. Yeah. I mean, I I think she maybe never knew what love was. Yeah, I mean, and that makes (laughs) sense, given, like... (laughs) Her economic status at the time period. I mean, when did when has she ever experienced love in her life, right? Yeah, and that's the thing too. Like with the doll, like you can see, like oh, it doesn't make a, it doesn't matter that much. But like she lost her brother and yeah. her mom. Yeah, and, and that's, to have uh, one more thing thrown away that she actually put care into. That's like kind of all she had left. You know, it was that doll at that point, wow. and then that gets burned away too. That's like incredibly like. I can see that being very scarring and traumatic for that alone too. Yeah, I think that's where having the old Sugarman place really helps. Like just <laughs> to hammer home the idea that for Beatrice, emotional attachment was just never, it, never a thing because it was never from, from rewarded. The, yeah, it from always the very, was taken away <laughs> from the very beginning. It was discouraged, and so because uh, by the time she she's the age of a debutante, that's just not in her DNA at that point. Yeah. So, which is why it becomes so difficult for her to make these decisions. Yeah, I think I think one of uh, going some going back to something Alex said. One of the main effects that this episode has on people is it makes you consider. Uh, the, you know, the, the people in your life and who are maybe not so yeah. great and why they might be that way. Um, that I think one of the main, uh, kind of maybe emotional or thematic purposes of the episode. Um, and in, in terms of the Bojack universe, like it just makes me think like this is why she's so terrible. She didn't break out of that. I, I, I like, I do feel sympathy for her in these, in these scenes and, and the show does a good job of showing her as a real person, um, in, in this episode with the, with some of these flashback scenes. But it's just so easy to see how she could have broken out of this. Um, and then it's like, this is why Bojack's a terrible person. This is why Bojack does the terrible things he does, like killing Sarah Lynn. So it's really Beatrice's fault that Sarah Lynn died. And then it's Beatrice's <laughs> dad's fault that Sarah Lynn died. She just shows. Okay, calm down. Well, that's, that's well, a of little... course, that's what you take out of that's it. That's what I take out of it. But it, it shows the cause. It's no, it's that this is like the big event of this season directly coming off the big event of last season. It's just like, this is why these shitty things happen with these people. This, ca- this causal effect of shittiness i think is one of the main themes that's going on here um and it definitely causes you to reflect on on people in your life and it reflect on these characters and i mean that's this is one of the show's mo's is getting deep into uh, like these suppressive emotions and now we're getting into why uh people are depressed and shitty and it's because of their parents were terrible and their parents were terrible and and uh it's it's uh you know i think i think the episode does a great job displaying that I think that the show definitely does, like, a really good job of, I guess, playing, like, the devil's advocate to, like, you know, abusive people. Mm -hmm. Well, obviously, you know, people are all people, and, you know, everybody goes through their own shit, and, you know, somebody abused somebody else, and, you know, your parents abused you, blah, blah, blah. It's just a whole cycle. And it definitely humanizes and makes you see... You know, like Dylan and Alex are saying, like, you know, the people in your life as people and not just as, like, figureheads 
of, you know, what a mom is supposed to be or what, like, a dad is supposed to be. You know, there are people, too, and they have their own thoughts, feelings, experiences, etc. That being said, I don't think that that's really, like justification for like what has all been going on i mean of course you know there's the whole psychology of you know beatrice's dad being an asshole and you know her never really experiencing what love was and that definitely affecting bojack growing up and you know feeling and him having like that whole like void in himself because of that so yeah while i think you know, that definitely explains it. I don't think it justifies it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's something that Todd said last season, I think at the very end, about how, you know, you can't keep blaming like the shitty things that you do on other people and like the shitty things that you do on like how your parents raised you or because this, that, and the other. And I think that's definitely true. I think people have the capacity be- to be more self aware of the city situations that they find themselves in and that they cause for others. I mean, just because, you know, you can recognize, Oh, my parents were abusive and that's why I'm that. That doesn't mean you can't change that. You can always be better and you can always like try to break the cycle of pain and suffering that has been brought on to you. But, you know, Bojack's old and, you know, can't teach an old horse new tricks sometimes oh, oh my God. Uh, Stop. Uh, but de- definitely that, that is something to emphasize here that it, there's no single cause to all of this so all of yeah. everything presented in this in this episode were contributing factors yeah uh, we, we we can't pinpoint something and at the also this episode i think did a good job at showing you that there were parts of her life where she could have made taken a different decision mm-hmm. on her own and changed her situation for the better but because she takes the wrong decision due to wrong, wrong motivations on in her personal sense is why the cycle kept continuing and continuing. But I, I think that it does a good job for us to remember that, that as Sam said, we can't blame our, our, our wrongdoing entirely on other factors, as BoJack has been doing for the past three seasons. There, there are also point, uh, points in our life where we have to take a stand and whether or not we decide to make the right, right decision will determine whether our situation improves or continues down a, 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 a hole. Right. And rather than getting into kind of a holistic moral uh, stance on this, I think it's like, what what is the show's perspective on what's happening here? And I think the show is... I, show is simultaneously arguing that here's why Bojack's shitty and here's why Beatrice was shitty. And it's also saying that uh, these people are still to blame. I think it's clearly presented that position that um, Bojack's still a horrible person and um, has so many chances to not be so horrible. And so did Beatrice. And this episode does, as Alex said, do show these opportunities. One in particular for me is once they move to San Francisco and we see Bojack as a baby and then we like flash to six years later and between that time I'm she's just incredibly like abusive to him and um it's like why what why is this why did this happen like why are you so terrible to to him now like how did this all change so fast and it's like it's hard not to imagine like you could that she could have done something differently in 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 that period that was like the biggest one for me um at the same time you also understand the situation that she's in and the preceding circumstances in her life so i think like clearly the i think the show does a great job of um of presenting uh these factors for why people are the way they are and then also showing how they're also responsible for their own actions and capable of breaking out of that cycle um for me personally like this episode has done the best job out of any media i've seen or even just general like philosophy of like of uh of explaining the point of of like legitimizing the point of people's uh, shittiness can actually be blamed on their past actions. I've like never bought into that of, or like can actually be blamed on their past circumstances. I've like always been very skeptical of that. And that's in large part due to my perspective and my privileged perspective, to be honest. Um, but it's, it's always been a hard concept for me to grasp that like people being shitty to them in the past can, is like a justification for them being shitty now. And despite the fact that this show doesn't, um, argue that that's like final and that they're still responsible for their own actions, I think it just does such a great job of presenting all these factors to and make you really like I like I came away like I I understand like uh that that uh so this is a character who was just I thought of as a hundred percent terrible but to up to this point. Um I I I, I get it to a certain extent. What do you think of that, uh-huh. Mich- what do you think of that, Michelle? 
I don't know. I'm thinking about several things. I, in a in a big way, I feel like Beach is like maybe the reason she's so like particularly nasty to Bojack is because like sh- for whatever reason she can't like compartmentalize her anger towards her father, which I would assume would be much more you know reasonable. Like especially since she like moved across the country and has this new life. Um, to kind of be able to step back and be like wow, like, he kind of really sucked. Like, I don't want to be that person. I don't think she, for for many reasons, probably, she was in a place where she could do that. And Bojack was a much easier target to kind of be a scapegoat for that, which is really not okay. Um, but I think that's really interesting. Also, um, Alex was saying a while before, like, what her life could have been like if she'd been with, oh, Creamerton. Um, yeah, the Cor- Corbin Creamerman. Yeah, Corbin Creamerman. And the thing I kind of got out of that was like, if if bad things happen to you, like it makes sense that you might have you might develop certain tendencies out of just like you know, especially if you're young and you're developing, like it's very important the kinds of like system you have in your family, but also um, your proximity to to toxic or or healthy people can really facilitate in a large way like how you end up functioning later on in life too and it makes me wonder like the fact that she ended up with butterscotch because she was pregnant and he like you know the, i don't think either of them thought they were going to see each other after the hookup like he even gave her the wrong at like phone number to like a pizza place for crying out loud he was very surprised she tracked him down she looks him up in the phone book and they decided to run away together kind of on this like illusion of like, this is going to be so great. We're going to do our dreams. But like, there wasn't really anything substantial there for them to begin with. And to me, it seemed like only a matter of time based on the fact that like, (laughs) they, they weren't really close and they didn't start off like for great reasons. Like she saw him as a great reason to rebel. But other than that, like what was there to the relationship that it ended up going so badly. But like, I don't know if she'd been with the goat guy, like at least they got <laughs> each other on the level of they both have these parents that want them to do things. And they're both from this like upper class society. And like, they kind of got each other on that level. And maybe like in a way, like she would have been around somebody who was like <laughs> a little more healthy and maybe it would have affected her decisions later in a positive way to just to be around like, you know, non-toxic people yeah. but we'll never know because that's not what yeah. happened but i think it's worth considering like the people you surround yourself with can either like enable you to continue deciding it's easier to be bad or to want to like you know grapple with the bad aspects you've picked up and to want to change them yourself that's a, yeah that's a great point at the end um and i was cracking up at the goat guy and um i know, yeah. I, know. I don't th- i don't think the show is making a stance that she should have chose um but no yeah, i don't think yeah. it is but i, I think mean it, she definitely least, thinks she should have yeah yeah she kind of does and i think it's like it's open enough that you can kind of decide for yourself what you think about that but that's always like kind of how the show is yeah, i don't think like, i don't think the point there. is that she should have chose corbin corbin uh, corbin i don't know and um yeah i don't think the point is that she cho- necessarily chose um wrong in him it's more of no it's no more it's, she made the decision for the wrong reason exactly yeah. yeah and like this is just like the fallout of like what those decisions like you know brought to being. Yeah, and that's a great point what you made before the people you surround themselves with. That's another big point of this episode. One thing you brought up also before is that um, she never, it's so sad, she never even realizes how terrible uh, her dad was. Yeah, that's like, that's really considerable. He's like, what? it's one of the most evil portrayals of a person I've ever seen in media. And she like never even realizes how terrible he is. Like that, that final shot is literally him being the horse devil. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I guess like that, like generation that she is from, and uh, I guess older people sort of romanticize the past, and they don't really focus on what was bad. They focus more on what they consider to be more admirable and more like. Yeah, she just pleasant. she just has a fucked up view of like life and him, and um, like, yeah, it didn't transfer onto like the reasons that she's fucked up are the reasons that she she still views him positively. Like it's one and the same. Like if she like had distance and objectivity, and um, like learns her lessons from why he was so terrible, but uh, then like it, things might have been different. Like I think that's all kind of connected here. Yeah, for sure. I think and, like- also the resentment for like butterscotch, like you know, keeping his cannery whatever job for a while 
Mm-hmm. I think that was also like a contributing factor because she was suddenly poor. Yeah, she and was so used she was to trying to lifestyle. Yeah, and so she was trying to like cling on to like anything that gave her comfort in that point, and that was like you know the idea like rich well not ideal like obviously but you know the rich like childhood she had with like all the privilege and the wealth and the maids nannies whatever etc um and of course like her father was a big part of that and eventually her father does employ butterscotch so you know there are there are like quote-unquote good things about her dad that she does see but i don't know it's just it's fucked up man it's fucked up, man. Yeah. Yeah. Too, yeah, man. It's too up. much, man. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any, yeah. I want to get to the other kind of highlight moments of this episode. Alex, any, Alex, Sam, any closing thoughts on this discussion? Nah. Okay. Um, yeah. Just, just the idea of, like it because be just the title of being her father, that, that may be enough for, for her as that she's the, as he's the only family figure really left it in, in yeah, her life for a has, long yeah, time yeah, mm-hmm. yeah so j- just just by default it, he ends up being the one that she clings to for all that time and it, it's also maybe a reflection of just the the coldness that she's inherited o- o- over over her childhood like she may interpret all this as unconditional a uh, quote unquote love but behind behind the the help that uh, joseph forceman gives her is not really motivated by love but rather by selfish reasons but because she is has developed such a cold form of thinking she can only process the results and not really what's behind it all and so that just all contributes to how she interprets her relationship with her father yeah um it's definitely and there's there's so much more we can get into with all with all of this um i want to make sure we not to go, not go too long here and get into some other quick things here um yeah, we're already talking about it for like 40 minutes i know and it's it doesn't even it's like it feels like it's it feels like just a uh service level view of this discussion honestly um i feel like there's there's so much more to get into on this um one one perspective i think this episode takes up that's not immediately um, I guess apparent when you look back on it is um, I think this is um, one of the most interesting feminist portrayals of kind of the past, uh, like of uh, like a hundred years ago, past hundred years, like uh, U.S. Um, and just the conditions that uh, women faced in 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 this. I think it's just a whole uh, an incredibly feministic portrayal here with um, everything uh, blatantly sexist that uh, Beatrice's dad says to uh, like the conditions um, that Beatrice faces and like these decisions of like keeping babies and stuff. And um, yeah, it just it just it very much stood out to me uh, how the, this feminist perspective of the episode. Mm-hmm. Although I, I did find it interesting that uh, when it comes down to her being with Butterscotch, she ends up taking the role of the classic housewife. But maybe that's uh, also like in response to just keeping up the the lifestyle that she's accustomed yeah. I mean, to. I mean, yeah. I think it's, it's part of yeah. inter- so. it's part of finally it, internalizing right. all that she was right. it's, re- it, surrounded by. It's part of the portrayal. She's not seen. She's not presented. Beatrice isn't presented as like a feminist figure in this. It's more of like the oppression uh, that uh, she'd faced that caused her to take these uh, fall into these sexist uh, roles in society. Um, yeah. Right, right. And also, like, it's an interesting uh, uh, exchange when she comes back from college and she mentions, like, this more knowledge that she's obtained about, like, civil rights history and all. And uh, Joseph just brushes it off. And it seems that after that moment, she kind of just lets that go. But because, like, immediately she's just shut down on uh, supposedly, like, being knowledgeable about these things. Hmm. Um, go, yeah, uh, quickly continuing the quick hits here, going through other moments in the episode, I feel like it was particularly striking in the beginning when we see, uh, it's Bojack and Beatrice talking in the car. And then, um, we finally see from her sp- perspective that, uh, yes, Bojack actually like is being seen as uh, Henrietta with like the scribbled out Why? Face. What is because... it about Bojack that is Henrietta? Well, it's all it's all because explained in the episode. She, yeah. She, she, yeah, she keeps seeing Hollyhock, and so I think the proximity of Hollyhock's like, oh, well, like who's the person? Oh, it must be the mom of Hollyhock. So it must be I Henrietta. Guess. That's what there's, I. There's, took there's no like substantial it. logical connection. It's kind of. I'm surprised that she remembers the face of this baby that she saw like what 18 years ago. I, mean, I don't point. think she's connecting it directly in her head. It's more just reminiscent of. Um, yeah. But uh, that that was a particularly v- striking visual. Like in the context of the season, we've just been seeing her call uh, Bojack Henrietta for song, and then we fi- it's like you, you kind of like 
Bojack kind of convinces you that maybe she's like faking it to a certain extent. And then you just see um, her perspective on it. Um, and that that's just particularly striking. And then later just seeing Henrietta as the maid um, and like finally figuring out who this figure is in her life that uh, had such an impact on her that caused her to see Bojack as her. Um, that painting is fucking ugly, though. <laughs> TBH. Paint by painting. Okay. And, I, and I can't really believe that a guy like, uh, what's his what's his face? Dad, Joseph, would have a painting like that in his home. It's yeah. too modern. For, fortunately, it was destroyed in the first Sarah Lynn episode, so that's nah. nice. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, I didn't connect that, but yeah, it's uh, I, just just the vi- and like the visually the transitions um, when uh, it's like these interconnected memories. There's a few transitions that really work, and then there's this one point where we see um, where we like see her confuse butterscotch for Bojack, um, like when they're at her party. Um, th- these are all like uh, really really successful narrative intertwining moments for me. Yeah. Um, Michelle, what other and other random things from the episode that stood out to you that we haven't touched on? I liked the like the jumping the hurdles at the debutante thing. That was actually pretty oh funny God. to me. <laughs> it was a weird introduction. She's still a horse. <laughs> yeah. To be okay, hi, okay, this isn't that important, but I always find these moments jarring. Like, I accepted your premise that animal people exist. Why are we like, uh, it's, why are we lampshading that now? It's it's the. It's just supposed to be funny to us, Dylan. I know. It, it's it's <laughs> it, it, it's possible it was a little t- it was the tone. Of Maybe this it's an alternate so Earth where, like, you know, humans just genetically modified animals to be like humans. Okay, no. But they oh, brought also, up like all the animal tropes. Okay, yeah, okay. With I, I, those I can, animals. You know, yes, I yes, but not now. <laughs> that theory. Uh, okay. Also, <laughs> as we've seen in the past, Bojack is incapable of dancing very well. So maybe they've decided that their version of dancing is this. It's, it's like horse dancing, like at the yeah, yeah. Because that, that's the thing okay. they're best okay. at. When they try dancing like humans in public, they get embarrassed, as Bojack has been several times. Yeah. Sam, moments from the episode we even talked about. Um, okay, for some weird reason, all the animals' last names are men, horsemen, sugarman, creamerman. What's that about? It's a good question. Mm. I, I, I feel like that's just a, a last name trend that was existing in human history as well, so I True. think they're just applying that. I think they're just having a laugh, like, ha ha, these are all animal people, huh? Ah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe Alex stuff that stood out to you that we talked about. Um, well, it, it's been a theme in in this season, but also they they touch a little bit more on uh, uh, Beatrice's obsession with weight. Like from the, mm-hmm. the very beginning, you have yeah, the the yeah. kids making fun of her for being supposedly fat. Uh, also later in the BoJack flashback, uh, for, uh, she imagines BoJack's refrigerator filled with lemon lemons and sugar, which was something referred to in the old Sugarman place as something that she should be consuming to save weight and i i think also um joseph uh, joseph uh, refers to that when she, she's putting on her corset yeah so it's, just, it's an interesting thing that we're continuing of her obsession with that and maybe how that influenced what she did to hollyhock in the uh, last episode that's so fucked up that like you know women's weight is just fucking the end all be all of the worth of a woman yeah i mean i think that's part of this feminist lens that this this episode has and just such a like uh uh, uh, substantial portrayal of of these factors. Um, I, I also I also really liked in this episode uh, the uh, Miss Clamelia Bloods, Bloodsworth, the fancy talking swan. Um, oh, I hate her. Eh, <laughs> no, nah, fuck, fuck that girl. That was, uh, considering how little screen time she <laughs> had, that was like an elaborate character design. I feel like with the with her language. Why I say yeah, I enjoyed that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, okay, so. Um, Here's uh, Michelle. Where does Time Zero rank in the pantheon of overall BoJack Horseman episodes for you? Um, top five. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sam. I do not think it's my number one choice, but it's definitely. What's your number there. one choice? I don't know. I have to rewatch the entire. So show. how are you so confident <laughs> it's not your number one choice if if, if uh, you don't know your number one choice? People have preferences for. I mean, it's it's just like it's a tough, complicated episode, but that's not going to necessarily make it my number one for those reasons alone. Okay. You know, okay. so yeah. Um, actually, Sam already said in the beginning. Alex, what's uh, what's okay? Well, I want to say it again. <laughs> well, I'll come back to you. I'll come back to you. Yeah. Go okay, for it. Go yeah. For yeah. It. Ah, damn. Dylan. I was going to come back to you after Alex, but yes, you think it's the best? Do you think it's the best episode of the series? No. Okay. <laughs> so. Uh, 
You, I uh, think it's the second best episode of the series. Yes. Why? Why so high? Down running is still the best. Why one. so high? Why, why so high on this yeah. episode? Because it is great and it breaks from all of the usual Bojack tropes that we're accustomed to, and it just takes us into a different headspace that we're used to. It it it, it goes there like the grassy. Mm. Mm. Yay, the grassy reference. <laughs> So that is not a reference I was expecting on this I like it. <laughs> Alex, what do you think? Uh, where does it rank on the Pantheon of Bojack apps? Also top five. Uh, I I think the four, the four episode 11 podcast, uh, uh, four episodes 11s are like top four. And I'd say of them, this one ends up being number four. Like I, I still prefer downer ending Escape from LA. That's too much, man. But this is uh, being number four out of those episodes is not a knock by any means. This is a, an, an amazing episode, very visually interesting to watch, and definitely better than like all the surrounding episodes of the season by far. Uh, what have Vanessa? What have Vanessa? Fucking clown, Dennis. Okay, come on, S- save it for next. <laughs> save it for next. Podcast. What have Vanessa opinion? The four episode elevens are one through four. Yeah, you must think all the <laughs> second to last. <laughs> we we all we all know it. We all yeah, I don't know it. You must think all not. the second to last Game of Thrones episodes are the best. Just because undead. Prickly Muffin is your favorite yeah. episode. Nope, not anymore. Okay, okay not anymore. Yeah, I'll t- I'll take that stance here. This is the best episode of BoJack. Um, here's why. Basically, BoJack for me, the worst part of BoJack is when it feels sitcommy to me. When I feel like there's just these plot elements for the sake of having like plot progression and these characters I don't care about and um just these nonsense plot lines. And that's when I'm the most turned off from BoJack is the more sitcom it feels. This is the least sitcom episode of BoJack. So I think it's the best one. This has none of the, t- none of the problematic elements of the show. But a lot of these other episodes that are also great do have these problematic elements. As great as like episodes like Downer Ending and, and ones like this with every, almost every episode with the exception of That's Too Much Man, maybe Prickly Muffin, which also doesn't have a terrible B plot. Um, it's, it's, it, this is consistent focused um on this uh beatrice's dementia and backstory that's the it's i think this is pretty consistent with my every other opinion i have consistent focused um uh, all within one episode um and it's just so incredibly narratively interesting that i think it's a it's a pretty clear number one to me i would say um i think it, it achieves um similarly high levels to other great episodes of the show while not sacrificing an ounce of consistency yeah and i, I will say this is uh, of the episodes 11, I, I think this this is the least it's been tempted to throw in gags. B- besides the horse jumping gag, I can't really think of a time where it like strayed. Yeah. Whereas like the previous ep- episode 11s, you have like a down and you have the setup of this being a, a drug trip, and you have like the um, Sarah Lynn and Todd going crazy. Escape from LA, you have like Kyle and the kids. Uh, yeah, those, like, yeah, those, yeah, those, yeah. And, and, the, and that, and that, and that's too much, man. You have Sarah Lynn hijinks. So like, but in, in all those, while you have a serious plot line, but you're wrapping it in the Bojack humor, which I personally prefer. But if you, you want a t- totally focused story, just a serious drama then i would agree that this is the best in achieving that goal yeah it's it's definitely like even if you don't place the same emphasis as i do like clearly this is like the most focused we've been on these these heavy episodes yeah there's just uh, they always have these nonsense happening and i do think that's too much man the nonsense was part of the dramatics it's like that like i think that previously was the high in consistency of the show um, but this has gone to another level. And I think if you just, it depends on what you want from Bojack. I'm not saying I don't want the hijinks as well. I think there's different elements of what makes the show great. Um, but, uh, there's no, like, there's no negatives to subtract here for me. Anyway. Um, yeah. And I, I mean, I think it's, it's one of the best TV episodes of the year in contention for best animation episode. Really, really hard to choose between this and, uh, Cid- uh Tales from the Citadel from Rick and Morty. Mm-hmm. Two, two su- such excellent episodes. I don't know what the fuck that is, but sure. Yeah, just gotta just gotta <laughs> watch it, yeah. Just, without having no, seen any else of Rick and Morty, yeah. Um, no, Boj- I'm a Bojack stan, Dylan. I'm sorry, Bojack stan. You know, you, you know how Butterscotch has the same voice as Bojack? Like, imagine an episode of Bojack <laughs> where all the characters were voiced by Bojack. <laughs> Can we get that. just a Will Arnett solo episode of Bojack? Can we do that? Yeah, like a being John Malkovich parody. I want that. <laughs> I like I'm that. Not, I'm not sure I do want that. <laughs> I like his voice better than uh, what's his face, Justin Rollins. Uh, I mean, Warnett is a great Hot voice. So. Um, there you go. So there's our discussion on Time Zero. We didn't mention in the beginning. Bedjack renewed for season five. Um, finally, I don't. Ooh. I, Ooh. Yeah. Yay! Yay. Yeah. 
Um, so we'll be hopefully. So we're we're gonna find out what happens next. Yeah, I and mean, we'll see the finale. Beatrice is probably gonna die. Probably, she can't live forever. <laughs> wow, I mean, they, she was given a time. She was given X months to live, right? And so now a, a, a question here: since we end on this like positive note of Bojack, like you know, trying to make her feel better, do we think he's gonna put in the effort to move her to a better home? No, I think I think they would have showed. That. No, it just doesn't happen. <laughs> he's still an asshole. Yeah, oh, I mean, okay, yeah. Okay. and they already paid for the room. Yeah, and I'm oh by that, and I mentioned the uh, with the spoiler warning in the beginning. We also see the origins of uh, Hollyhock here, and I and um I will say I have seen the finale, so I know it's it's confirmed there, but um. It's I, I I got the impression from this episode that that was Hollyhock, so I think yeah. that that was the reveal in this episode. And there's hashtag foreshadowing of Butterscotch being like flirting with the girls, like oh my mom also had a diamond, and oh my mom had hair like that, and what does Hollyhock have? Yeah, a diamond and hair yeah, so like we, that. So we finally get the, yeah. the Butterscotch does and, not have a diamond. B T W. Okay. Yes, Alex. Oh, just also like it's uh, when they were in the episode where they were fighting over the baby and Bojack throws it out the window or something like uh, she lets out the line like Henrietta, you wasted my husband's jism or something like that. So like it's a nice <laughs> oh, tie yeah. in here yeah. because yeah, at the, at the yeah. time it was, a, it was a weird line and Bojack is like, oh, haha, you do remember me because she thinks he's talking about him. But it's actually Holly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They fucks. Yeah, this, this okay. Uh, they, they, uh, yeah. This, this, this explains so much from the season. Yeah, I'd, I'd make the case that um, saving a ton of reveals for this is more of a season long discussion, but saving so many reveals and reasons for Beatrice's actions, I feel like it maybe weakens previous episodes, but builds up this episode, um, which is an interesting choice. Yeah, I, I always like we... rewatching episodes after like a big reveal happens, so that I can figure out what all mm, the clues yeah. were. Yeah, that part's nice, but I, I think I agree. We, we've talked on previous podcasts about pacing being an issue in this entire season, mm-hmm. and I think while this episode was amazing, but it, it shows you just like what what the pacing has done to the season, where like we have three episodes of meh, and then you get this big boom, and so it just it it doesn't feel as balanced as previous. Seasons, I, th- I think I the say. season sacrifices a lot to achieve the brilliance of Old Sugarman Place and Times Arrow. Right, yeah. right. Which I think ultimately results in it being not as good as the previous season. We'll get into that next episode. Okay. Um, so uh, that is, uh, that's it for our discussion on Times Era. Let us know your thoughts on anything we discussed here. Comments, YouTube comments. Um, uh, any- is time as linear as we think it is? Or is it just no, a big scatter? Don't comment on that. Um, but <laughs> yes, you, you, you can comment if you want. So, um, you can find everything at OverlyAnimated.com. Subscribe to us, Overly Animated Bojack Horseman. We'll have our finale podcast coming up soon. The journey is almost finished. Um, join us on Discord to text chat about animation at OverlyAnimated.com slash uh-huh. Discord. We have a Bojack channel. Um, and support us via Patreon at patreon.com slash overly animated. Thank you very much to all of our current patrons, especially our patron of the podcast, Andy, aka Buzz Like and thanks as always to our patron executive producers, John Ryan, Steve, Alex, and Andy. Um, check out our overlyanimated.com, look for our finale po- Bojack podcast, and for uh, everything else that we are covering, including Rick and Morty, which Bojack fans like Sam should check out. So, um, Call no, out. So right. thanks for listening, guys. Don't call me out like we that. Will call me out. We will see you next time. Bye. Bye. Adios. Bye.